All right, so my Dell Optiplex has finally came in. Let's see what is actually in the box. I'm gonna be using this as a file server. Yeah, I could get a uh, yeah, I could get a uh, NAS and whatnot, but for my needs, I don't need something that expensive. A file server and that'll work completely fine. Yeah, it looks like the eBay seller actually sold it pretty well. And it looks to be in halfway decent shape and it even comes with a Windows key. So I'll be able to legally activate this, uh, legally activate Windows on this. So I'm going to pull this thing out and come back. Well, it's not in the best of shape, but that is to be expected. It's a Dell Optiplex 7D10. Now this one did not come with a CPU or RAM or a hard drive, but that's totally fine with me. I have all that. So with that said, I really like the way this thing looks. And it looks like it originally came with a Core i3. Now when it comes to this uh, Dell Optiplex, I will be running Windows 7 on it because I know Windows 7 is a more stable OS compared to uh, Windows X, uh, not XP, but Windows 10 and whatnot. So luckily it did come with a cooler, has a little fan on the back, and it looks like the power supply is in fact replaceable. Which means that if I really wanted to get another one of these Dell Optiplexes, I can convert it to a nice little gaming rig. Though with that said, I will be putting my 750 Ti into this thing. But for right now, I just need to make sure this thing actually functions before I actually go through and well put a 750 Ti in there. And I can already see where I need to put my RAM and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my processor and RAM and be right back. Come on eBay seller, you could have at least fully cleaned off the thermal paste. You removed the stinking processor. You could have at least cleaned off the thermal paste and it looked a little nicer. I mean, for God's sakes, that's what I did with my uh, motherboard and processor. When I uh, boxed them up and whatnot, I made sure they're as clean as possible. I have yet to actually put up a listing and whatnot, but still, I actually put the time and effort to make sure the thing I'm going to be selling on eBay is actually nice and clean compared to this. Come on, dude. That's always lovely. A nice little guy with thermal paste right next to the pins. Luckily, I have a small little pair of tweezers and I'll be able to pull that off, but... Again, come on, dude. You could have at least cleaned it off and made sure it looked nice. Maybe if my AMD board's a little more difficult, but I made sure that once I saw thermal paste on the socket, that I put everything back together again and booted it up again to make sure it still works. And of course, it still worked. So I went through the whole process of taking photos and packing everything up so it looks all nice and clean and ready to go. So, yeah. Again, come on, dude. All right, I did the best I could to get most of it out of the way from the pins. There is still quite a bit there, but it's away from the actual pins themselves. But again, come on, dude, you couldn't have, why did you leave that there? So uh, with that said, now I have to put my processor in here, put in the RAM, and hope that this thing works. Luckily, I have an iFixit kit with these nice little small tweezers, and I was able to use that to get most of the thermal paste off. So I'm going to put the i5 in there, like I said, and hope everything works. Turns out I need my 750 Ti anyways because there's only display ports on the back of the motherboard. So I have hooked up to my uh, Acer monitor here. And let's see what happens when I uh, turn it on. Give me a second. Annoying new neighbor is annoying. I was trying to do something. Fans are ramping down. I should hopefully get a post fairly soon. One thing I've noticed is that this thing doesn't have any uh, LEDs in the front, so it's going to be really hard to diagnose something if this thing doesn't want to post.
I'll let the thing sit and come back if something happens. Alright, I had a feeling something like this would happen. I decided to swap out the 8 gigs for a 4 gig kit. And I'm now getting a post. Which is good. All right, so I'm getting a post now. I'm going to shut it down again and put these. Oh, here we go. Non-bootable bootable device, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're good there. Sorry about the autofocus. I'm going to take these two sticks, put them back into the motherboard, and see what happens. All right, hopefully this works. And I'm now getting an image again. All right. So I don't know if the RAM is actually being fully detected. and I am seeing some errors. I think that's most likely keyboard and mouse error. But uh, with that said, it looks to be functioning. So next step, install Windows 7. All right, I think the neighbor's done with his motorcycle. So let's see if I can get this thing to boot. Uh, let's see, I'm going to bet F, uh, not F1, but I'm going to press delete. Ooh, that DVD drive. Disk is fine, DVD drive is dead. Okay, system configuration, no system info. System info, 12 gigs of RAM installed, BIOS revision, uh, VGAs detected, uh, system configuration, let's see what this shows. Okay, I'll screw with all that later, I just wanna see that something shows everything properly. Uh, I think I might need to do that for Windows 7, but we'll just have to see. UFIE, so yeah, I got to swap over to Legacy, so yeah, I'm going to go in there and change all that crap. Alright, got my trusty Let's Grab DVD drive. It's from my HP laptop I got, not laptop, desktop I got way back in 06. So I'm going to hit F12, sorry about the autofocus. $1,000 smartphone, can't maintain autofocus for the damn. So let's see what happens. It doesn't want to boot to it because I got put into legacy mode, which is understandable. But uh, what makes it even funnier is that I have an HP drive, HP RAM, and, and a Dell uh, Optiplex. So I'm going to reconfigure the BIOS and boot into the DVD drive, into the uh, boot drive and whatnot, and get Windows 7 installed. All right, got the boot from the DVD drive. Now to install Windows 7. And since I am using Windows 7, it will take a little while to actually do everything, but I am copying it to an SSD, so when everything's actually done, it will be a nice snappy little machine. So, I will come back when I get to the desktop. Oh yeah, another thing you may note, I have two other LifeScribe drives right here. The reason being, as you can see, the fascia on this one's pretty damaged. So I want to try and swap in one of these two. I don't know which one works. I'm certain they both do. But I brought both of them here because I know I do have drives in my possession that do not work. But uh, I will be swapping over, swapping in one of these drives once I get Windows uh, 7 installed through this one here. And it's slowly taking its time, but it's getting its job done. Again, sorry about the autofocus. $1,000 smartphone. Can't maintain autofocus to save its own life. Alright, I got to the desktop and everything seems to be working. The only thing that's annoying is the fan for the uh, CPU heatsink. The ball bearing it, it is going bad, so I'm going to replace it. I'm also going to replace the heatsink also. I'm going to replace it with this one right here. As you can see, I got a beefier fan and a beefier heatsink. Now, I can't remember exactly what Optiplex this one came off of, but honestly, I'm fairly certain this is going to work completely fine nonetheless. And if this heatsink doesn't work, I just swap in this fan. But uh, before I actually do that, I need to make sure this fan here plays nice with the motherboard because, again, it is a Dell and these fans are proprietary, unfortunately. So I need to plug this fan in, see what happens, and make sure it boots and whatnot. So I'll go and do all that off camera and come back.
or I can just set it up in a way to where I can have it plugged in and show what see what it does. Previous fan hit error, so I'll just hit F1 and continue. I'll let it reboot. I expect it to do that for the first time since I did just remove it, but um, I'm going to reboot the system again and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't do it again. All right, and it seems like this fan plays nice with this computer. So now I'm going to do the swap out and uh, continue on with updating Windows 7 and whatnot. All right, I'll let the computer sit for a little bit. I want to make sure that it wasn't a fluke. Sorry about the autofocus. Keep saying time and time again, $1,000 smartphone, can't maintain autofocus to save his own fucking life. All right, and it's booting right into Windows 7, which means I can, in fact, do the swap out. So I'm going to do that and come back. All right, I'm installing the last update required to allow this computer, or, well, Windows 7, to actually connect to the update servers so I can actually fully update Windows 7. With that said, the new cooler I attached is working completely fine. I haven't had any fan errors. I also made a nice little bracket for my uh, 750 Ti, that way so it's not sagging and whatnot. Now this is a 750 Ti, but I do want it to look nice and clean, even though it won't be seen with the uh, cover open, but still, or the cover closed, but still. So once this is done and I do a restart, I'm going to swap out this uh, DVD drive for one of my other ones and hopefully have one that still works. Because again, this one does work, but it's a little sticky. As you can see, it doesn't always open, so something on this is, is uh, sticking. I did try to resolve the issue, but I never really could. So I'm just going to swap out this drive for another drive and hopefully have one that's not sticky and whatnot. And I got to restart the computer, so I'm going to finish everything else off off camera and come back later. Alright, so I'm going to try and fix this drive again. I have taken this drive apart before to try and resolve it, but I want to try again one more time. What's happening is it's actually... Alright, I want to try and fix this drive. Uh, the two light scratch drives are dead. So I'm thinking I'm going to probably cannibalize the uh, motor and gearing system or cannibalize something from the dead drives to try and get this one up and functioning again. I know at the very least I'll be able to uh, steal the uh, front fascia because the one on mine is pretty damaged. Luckily there is no HP logo on it so I could just easily do a swap and it wouldn't matter. But at least I, but I will be keeping the HP sticker on mine because well... This is my original HP drive and it still works to this day. It's just a tad sticky when I want it to open up and close and whatnot. So I'm going to pop this thing apart and I'm going to try and fix it. Well, my father had a tube of lithium grease. So I'm going to use this to maybe to hopefully get this thing back up and running. I'm thinking just the uh, grease that they usually use for this thing is just long dead. I'm hoping just doing that, like greasing up the the uh, gearing and whatnot and the sliders will allow this to actually open and close properly again. Alright, I really can swap out the faceplate, but uh, the lithium grease, even though it's 20 years old, has done the trick. It actually functions like it used to. Now obviously it's slower, most likely the motor is probably failing or the, or the little belt might need to be replaced. But, at least now when I tell it to open up, it actually opens up. So with that said, now I'm going to put the uh, put the uh, front cover back on, put the side cover back on, and actually connect the thing to the internet and start downloading all the necessary updates to get Windows 7 into a fully up-to-date functional state. And of course, that includes the drivers for the GPU. All right, and now starts the about two-day process of installing updates for Windows 7. 
Now granted, I'm going from Windows 7's installation CD back when Windows 7 originally came out. And even though I have gigabit internet and I'm using a uh, 120 gig SSD for this thing, it's going to take a long time. Now yes, I could put Windows 10 on this thing and use that and be up and running within like an hour, but again, this is a file server or a computer I'm going to be using to store all my crap on it. So I would rather use a operating system that is stable, consistent, and not Windows 10 or Windows 11 or fucking Linux, because fuck Linux. Alright, looks like updating Windows 7 didn't take as long as I initially thought. And I decided since I actually don't have my source drives with me anytime soon, why not do at least some type of gaming on this thing? And currently right now I'm just playing Minecraft. Uh, the Anarchy server I tend to play on is a little dead unfortunately, but... Minecraft on this thing runs completely fine, it even runs the new revisions of Minecraft, which I'm very impressed with. Then again, I do still have a dedicated GPU, which is a 750 Ti, but I'm pretty certain that 750 Ti is only running at PCI Gen 2 speeds and not Gen 3 like it could be. But uh, with that said, it looks like everything seems to be functioning. So I'm just going to continue using this thing for a little while and do a final little update on this thing until I can get some storage drives for this thing and actually turn it into the server I want to turn it into. Alright, I'm going to end it here. I decided I'm going to try and convert this case over to a standard uh, computer usage. And what I mean by that is, well, I got to figure out the pin out for the on off button and the on LED. And I got to figure out the pin system for this little cable right here, as you can tell, this plug is not proprietary. This little plug right here goes to front uh, front audio, hard drive LED, or hard drive yeah, hard drive LED, and USB 2.0. Luckily, the USB 3.0 is standard, so I don't have to do anything with this. So I'm going to, have to pop this thing apart tomorrow when I'm more awake and competent and figure out the pinouts for everything. What I want to do first is I want to get the pinouts for the audio and the H and the hard drive LED. I'll leave the USBs alone because I still need to be competent enough to where I can actually uh, wire USB 2s. But uh, I just want to at least get the front audio and this working. I'll get the USBs working later on. But again, like I said, I want to get the other components functioning first. So at the very least getting the power button here functioning is going to be easy and of course getting everything inside of the case is going to be easy too including my RX 580. Like I said I already did some preliminary testing and I know that everything's going to work. The only thing I really want to figure out is do I want to put a fan here in front and uh, what type of fan do I want to use in the back right here. I want to use a Noctua but this one's too small. I did use this AMD one, but this is a stock cooler AMD fan. It is technically the right size, but the holes for it to actually to mount it right here don't match. So I'm most likely going to end up buying a proper Noctua fan for this thing down the road. But for right now, I just want to, like I said, convert this case over to actual normal motherboard usage because I'm one of the very few people that like the look of Dell Optiplexes. And I also want to one-up the YouTube videos I've seen of people doing this type of thing and actually leave in the hard, uh, not the hard drive, but the DVD drive and the hard drive cages. Because that's the one thing I see uh, people not doing is they remove this and this to do the conversion. I want to keep everything there and make everything stock and also make everything functional. So, um... That's something for a little later tomorrow for me to do, so I'm going to edit this video and upload it and whatnot.